Good day, everyone. I'm Ralph, uh, in the TQFD. And today, I just want to talk to you all about ferroelectrics, because uh, I think I'm the only person here who does ferroelectrics, and what they've been used for in the past, what we use for them now, and the sort of future uses, and why we care about them and why we research them. Uh, so yeah, first off, though, what is a ferroelectric? Uh, so you might know, you just put up the words like they like to do. Ferro is, you know, the thing on your table, iron. Whereas electric is a thing that charges their phones, uh, it's that Pokemon type, and it's also the word for amber. And just like how you can assume ferroelectrics have nothing to do with Pokemon, ferroelectrics also have nothing to do with iron. Uh, none of this really works. Uh, ferroelectrics are best understood uh, as an analogy to ferromagnets, your sort of normal magnets, with the north and south pole in the magnetic field. Ferroelectrics are basically the exact same thing with a positive pole and a negative pole and an electric field. Uh, you can switch them, you can change them with an external field. We should be drawing them to be a bit more simpler with this up and down arrow. But why do we care? And why did we care? Well, if you think back to the golden old ages of 1999, the shooting you were alive back then, we had these awesome musical hits. Uh, we'll start by Smash Mouth. Uh, Prison of Azkaban was part of the show. This came out and people would really love watching agencies in the cinemas for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, in this old age of 1999, there were these two types of memories. There was flash memory with this top of the range 32 megabytes uh, MMD card. There was the pre cooled SD cards. Uh, they were non volatile, so you could write them, but they were very slow. On the other hand, you had RAM. RAM had this memory, which was much faster, but the moment your power went out, the memory was gone. What they wanted, what you might want if you want to make memory, was something that had the best of both worlds. And that was ferroelectric RAM, or FE-RAM. It was non-volatile because you could write it directly into the electric dipole with electric polarization, and it was very, very fast. And so back in 1999, the first commercial use of ferroelectric RAM was uh, the PlayStation 2 memory card, which looked like that. Well, if you got one open, don't do that at home. Uh, you have, at first, but mainly your 8 megabyte flash memory, so flash memory is still used. But there was also an integrated chip inside it, which had one kilobyte of RAM and four kilobytes of ferroelectric RAM, which was mainly used to make sure to check like what game you were actually connected to at the time. Stuff like that. And so ferroelectric RAM actually had real commercial industrial uses. Uh, and today they're still used. So Infineon is the largest company, it's a German company. But basically, flash storage and flash memory has gotten really, really good and really, really fast. So today, when we use FE RAM, we only really use it for small, low-power devices, things like RFID cards or microchips, it's for actual com computers, they are really not useful. So, in that context, today, why do we care? Uh, they don't really have an application for memory, but in terms of circuits, there are still so many cool things that we're actively trying to work on. So one, we have multi-ferroics, which is when you take ferroelectric and ferromagnets, put them at the same time together, you can have some really cool electronic properties going on, and then other properties. We also have some new materials, like hafnia, hafnia oxide, they call the Russian interest. And you've got the main walls, which is what I care about, it's what I work on. So what are the main walls and why do we care? Well, so like I said, we have different regions of different polarizations. I have a whole region pointing down and a whole region pointing up, in terms of positive and negative charges. And they call these large regions domains. And the walls between these domains are called domain walls. It's a very good name. And because these domains have their polarizations, when you face the two, polarization directions, we have a buildup of charge. And because conductivity and current is the motion of charge, charge buildup means we have local domain wall conductivity or increasing conductivity. However, because these things are domains, are ferroelectric, we can move them and switch them, we can also just move our domain walls. So we can actually change and move our sort of nanowires and surface. And finally, if these things curve, they get a transition from mostly positive charges to mostly negative charges. They get what's basically a PN junction, which is going to do some cool things like a diode and transistors and all those good stuff, while still being rewritable. We can write our circuits while using them. And so in ETFL, they released this awesome YouTube video where an animated professor in Lava Center talks about how, oh, this can be used to make a rewritable future, how our electronics can write as we use them. Uh, she draws an analogy to like a futuristic city where like as you walk, the, the paths like come up to meet you. And it's pretty far-fetched, but it, I think it tells us the sort of potential that we sort of have in these things. The ability to make these radical circuits. And so we do all these cool stuff. We do this thing called scanning for microscopy, which you might 
be familiar with. This name also makes sense. We have a microscope, and the sensor puts us to look at things small. We have a probe that moves across, and we scan if we go left to right. It lets us look at different things. Uh, and there are a few different types of scanning probe across the we use. So we have PFM, we have KPFM, and we have CAFM. Lots of different terms, but basically PFM is the one that looks at electric poles, dipoles. KPFM looks at static and surface potential, and CAFM looks at conduction or conductors. Uh, and with that, we can see some basic results, basic research. So here is some my research where we can see with PFM the different polarizations, so different faults. Uh, we can see that as we increase the voltage, we expand the down domain and therefore move the main wall from left to right. However, in this region, I'll have to strain the dotted line. You can see that the main walls get stuck, which is just right in this well in Italy. So, to bring us all back down together, back in 2000, we had this amazing thing that plays a gentle memory card. Today, we have cool potential in terms of uh, circuits, the main walls in conduction. And tomorrow, perhaps, we can have our rewritable electronic future using our electricity. Thank you.